This is part two of the first lesson of the Tool to Type workshop. Hopefully, having completed the exercise I provided you, you have a fair grasp as to how to use the tool to draw paths. I now want to demonstrate how to apply what you've learned and show you how to transfer your work into glyphs. Before I do, I want to continue where we left off and show you a few more important things about how paths work. You'll recall that I was working on the paths of this letter B. All paths travel in a particular direction. You'll notice that the starting point has an arrow indicating what direction the path travels. Okay, I have the outline of the B. Now I need to create some inside counters. I'm going to use the shape tool to create those. Like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. Some tools have toggles. The shape tool can either be an oval or a square. I'll use both. Something's not quite right. Look in the preview and you can see that the counters are not appearing. As we talked about, this is because all the paths are traveling in the same direction. This really isn't a big deal because there are a couple of ways that we can fix this. The easiest way is to go into the Paths menu and select Correct Path Directions. Notice now the counters are showing up in the preview. Also, performing this function has placed the starting node of each path in the default placement, usually the bottom left corner of a path. Any point on a path can be a starting node. Simply right click on the node and drag down to Make Node First. It's very important that all of the glyphs in your font have the correct path direction. It's just good font design. Now for the fun part, transferring our own hand lettering into glyphs. I'll go ahead and delete what I have here and I'm going to a piece of Michael Clark's. I'm going to grab this letter B, copy it, go back to the glyph cell and paste. Notice that it's too small. With the B selected, I'll grab the top right corner and hold the shift key down to constrain the proportions. Now here's the fun part. I can go into the filter menu and I can trace this letter without having to do any editing. Once it's been traced, I can delete the image. If you look in the preview, you can see the letter looks great, but there is a little bit of an issue with the number of nodes. I'm not going to worry about that right now. That can be cleaned up later. I'll adjust the side bearings and you can see how the letter is fitting in the bounding box. Now it's very possible that you don't have the trace image filter available to you. You can load filters by going to the window menu and selecting plugin manager. There's a whole list of plugins you can install. In addition to the filters, you can also install dozens of scripts to glyphs for additional functions not available in the app. I recommend MechaBlue scripts. To install these, you'll need to follow the instructions provided by one of the creators of Glyphs, Rainer Scheichelbauer. You can find instructions for loading the scripts on YouTube. I have to say though, most of these scripts are quite advanced, so for now you probably won't need them. I just want you to know that they are available if you do. For now, I think I've given you enough information that you can confidently work on your own. I'm looking forward to explaining things in more detail during our session. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.